All right, so back here at Righteous Guitars. It's been a while since I've been in here and made a video, but I wanted to come in today and look at some strats. For a while, I've been thinking about sort of the differences between custom shop versus boutique versus off the line Fender and how much of a difference other than price is there really between a Fender custom shop top of the line Strat versus a Sur. Today we're gonna play a bunch of Strats and see if we can hear and feel and notice the difference, not just in price, but in playability and tone. What's the custom shop difference? Also my friend Adam is here with me. <laughs> All right, so Adam and I are gonna look at some strats here on the strat wall at Righteous. I wanna play a Fender Custom Shop. I wanna play at least one good boutique, kind of small builder strat, and something a little more mass produced like a Sur. Played a couple of those K-lines and they're really cool. These written houses I just played for the first time. Fiesta Red over three tone, that guitar is pretty good. Two grand. But this is what I want to check out. Look at that. I would have Adam play, but... Left-handed. He's left-handed. Mistake I made a long time ago. <laughs> Give me three, three of your best strats in three different price ranges. Three different strats, three different price ranges. Well, I guess we'll do a Sir Classic S. Yep. There's one. I know which Fender will do. Okay. And I've got a Mario Martin as well, I think would be the three to okay. round it out. What's that? You know what happened? No. Uh -huh. They're great guitars. So yeah, that's pretty slick. It's a Mario S style. Wow, show the neck, the back of the neck. Oh, it's crazy. Wow. It's like a flame and bird's eye, roasted. Lake Placid Blue under Olympic White. Yep. Definitely cool. Doesn't suck. Does not suck. Well, I think we know what Ben's favorite is already. Because he's talked the most about the Mario since I've been here, so. Mainly the telly. <laughs> I love that telly. Yeah, I want to hear you play that guitar. It just looks awesome. I'm going to have to cut this video up because the Beatles are playing in the background and I'm going to get a copyright strike. <laughs> yes, that's the one I'm most excited about. Chocolate two-tone sunburst. I've never seen that chocolate wow. color before. Yeah, it doesn't fade to black. It looks amazing. That's really pretty. Yeah. It looks like an old 60s strap. Yeah, yeah man. Which it should. I think it is a 60. Yeah. Okay, so we are all set up to record in here and play some of these killer looking strats. Amp I'm going through today is the divided by 13 JJS 31. It's basically their take on an AC 30. I've got that mic'd up with an SM57 and an MD421 from Sennheiser going straight into my recorder. And I've got a little pedal board that I threw together so we can run some effects into the front end of this amp and hear what these things can do. Well, the Fender looks pretty awesome. I heard, I've heard a bunch of good things about these Mario Martins, though. But I've actually never played a Sir on the channel before. This is, this is the Sir debut. Excellent. On the YouTube channel. Isn't a bad Mario called a Wario? Wow. I think you're right. <laughs> the thing with Fender Custom Shop and Mario that is different than, say, like a Sir with a Classic S is it's, a Classic S is like a, uh, a predetermined menu. 
Yeah. So it's already got the pickups that are very popular. It's got the neck profile that they find most popular, the radiuses that they find most popular, um, limited colors. Whereas when you get to Mario, you have unlimited options. You can be any neck, any color, which means you really can build a not for everybody guitar mm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Fender Custom Shop's the same way. Their spec sheet is enormous, uh, the amount of options they have to order. So you can build a not so great Fender Custom Shop too, but you can also build pretty magical stuff. Um, and it's pretty staggering how many options you have. Whereas with Sir, this is a, a with the used to be called the Professional Series, may still be called the Professional Series, it's Classic S. If you wanted this in pink, it's gonna be about $1,000 more. Mm. And then it's a custom guitar. Once you go to a Sir Custom Shop, then your options open up quite a bit. Right. But even then, I don't know if you get as much variations as possible with Mario and Fender. So price-wise, how much is the Sir? They're $2,800 for a Classic S. Okay. Then the Mario is our mid-level sort of boutique option, and that's... 3350 ish okay. right And that's a pretty loaded Mario, to okay. be fair. It's got a lot of stuff going on. And obviously, the Fender Custom Shop is coming in at the top end of our price range. And it's around 41 Okay. So, And it's got some special stuff going on, too. But all in all, they're all just really good strats and different takes on them. What to you is the Custom Shop difference? I'm a diehard strat player, as Rhett knows, and you're learning. Um, so for me, a really great strat is going to remind me of some of the vintage guitars that I have, but maybe it was not some of the, the, the drawbacks of those vintage instruments, because I've had to do a lot of work on all my guitars to get them to feel the way they do. Fender Custom Shop gives me the ability to get a new guitar that feels, honestly feels very, very similar to the older guitars uh, that I have. And so for me, it's just like a glove. It's right at home. Sir, uh, are awesome guitars. I really like them and I play them quite a bit here at the store when we do videos. Um, Sir is very much a modern take on a Strat. So with the compound radius, it feels a little foreign to some people. Once you get used to it, it's awesome. It's a nine to 12 radius. So it feels more like a Les Paul down here, uh, which is great for when you're bending, doing things like that. It's more like a current Strat up here. It's easier to cord on. Um, also the stainless frets are nice because they just, they're not gonna wear out. Mm -hmm. They'll outlive us. No string tree up here, just a deeper scoop, uh, which is one less point of friction for it to tie up in and get you know, hung up with tuning. The Goto 510 is a very smooth tremolo. Uh, these are uh, silent single coils. Same thing here, you got locking keys, so changing strings is really fast, but definitely a modern take on the Strat. The Mario can be modern, but in this case, it's pretty, pretty vintage-y in a lot of ways. Um, so you have the six point trim again, as opposed to the 2.510. This is a standard cylindrical radius, so it's, I think it's a 10 radius. It's a little flatter than a current Strat. Pretty sure these guys are, they might be Buds, they also could be Lawlers, I'd have to go look to be sure. But it feels, again, like an older Strat, but you can see it's obviously got some stuff going on that is not that. So roasted neck, um, it's just a really cool guitar, but still you get the clay dots and a lot of the older aesthetic. And the Fender, you know, it's got all those drawbacks. It's got the string tree, which is arguably a point of tuning stability. The old style keys where you slide the string in the top and wrap around, no locks, nothing fancy there. Um, six point bridge set up to float. Uh, and then, you know, electronic wise, this is pretty standard. It's nothing crazy. Staggered pull piece pickups. These are hand wound 60s pickups. Um, seven and a quarter radius on this. So it's tight, it's a vintage style guitar. Um, but that just feels, just feels like home to me. So is it worth it? I guess you have to decide. <laughs>
Ben asked me if the action was set properly on all three, and I, I was like, yeah, you could drop the, the action a little bit on the custom shop. Just because I wanted the action a little bit lower, took it back there, pulled the neck off, adjusted the truss rod twice, now for the third time, just to get the action right, so I can test these guitars out. Like, if that's not customer service, I don't, uh, I don't really know what is. Okay, so first up, let's talk about the Sir, sort of our most standard of the three guitars, standard being a relative term here, but this is a great guitar. Extremely well made, very reliable, very stable. This would be a really great option for a working musician who wants an incredibly nice, well-made instrument on not a budget per se, but of the three, the most budget-minded. It's well-balanced, it plays well, it stays in tune. The modern features like the locking tuners and the compound fretboard radius are all really great features that, again, make this a great option for a working musician. I didn't dig it. I don't know why, there's just something about this guitar that didn't resonate with me. Now that's not to discount anything that Sir does. Again, they make incredible guitars. Maybe it is the modern features that I just didn't feel comfortable with. But of the three strats that I just played, I felt the least at home and the least expressive and creative on the Sir. Now again, that's gonna vary greatly depending on the player and your preference and your background. What kind of guitars are you coming from? What do you like out of a guitar? And I can't stress this enough. That is nothing to say about the quality or the playability or the tone of the instrument. It just didn't resonate with me. Next up, we have the Mario Martin Strat. Now, this is a very cool guitar. I mean, just look at it. It's got vibe for days. Really cool finish, a unique relic job, maybe not the most uh, accurate relicking job out there, but still a cool look, a cool vibe, and the neck, man. I mean, just look at that neck. That is very, very cool. This guitar felt much more natural and playable to me than the Sir did. And after thinking about it for a second, to me, I think the Sir felt a little sterile. This has more of the vibe and the feel that I look for out of a guitar. It doesn't have the modern features like the two-point trim system or the locking tuners or the compound radius, but what it lacks in modern features it makes up for in tone and playability and vibe. This guitar is what I like in a Stratocaster. It just, I don't know, it just, this does it for me. I love the finish. Strats in white are one of my favorite things ever, especially when you have something cool like this sonic blue coming in underneath. I think a guitar like this would also be a great option for a working guitar player. It has the vintage vibe and the vintage feel, but it is reliable. It stays in tune, it plays well, <laughs> and because it's relic, I wouldn't necessarily be worried if this thing got nicked or scratched or dinged because, I mean, look at it. Let's talk about the Fender. The Custom Shop 1960 Fender Strat. Definitely the most expensive of the three. I mean, this is over $4,000 before sales tax, by the way. So, you know, by the time you're out the door with this guitar, you're pushing close to five grand, which is a lot of money. I mean, that's like a solid used car. There's so many things that you could spend $5,000 on that would be more responsible than a guitar. That being said, this was my favorite of the three. I don't know what it is exactly, but when I pick this guitar up compared to the other two, it just feels right. It feels at home. It, it feels like this is what a Strat should feel like from my perspective. Now, I've been lucky enough to play a couple of truly old Strats, a 54, a 56, both were completely original. And when you play those vintage instruments, there is something about them that you just can't get in a modern guitar. No matter who the builder is, no matter what the price tag is, when it's actually been a guitar for over 60 years, the wood resonates differently. It plays differently, it sounds different. And while this doesn't match a true 54 or 56 or 60, which is what this is based on, it comes pretty close. If you have your heart set on owning a 1960 Strat, but you don't have, I don't know, 
what, $25,000, $30,000, $35,000 to drop on a vintage guitar. That's what the custom shop is for. When I look at Fender Custom Shop or Gibson Custom Shop, yeah, the price tags are pretty staggering. But if you're looking for a truly historic recreation of the quote, real thing, the real vintage guitars, I think stuff from Fender Custom Shop and some boutique builders are the way to go. Yes, they are insanely expensive. I mean, the smart decision would be to buy the Sir because that's an amazing guitar. It's all the guitar you would ever need and it's the most cost effective of the three. But if you're looking for a guitar that is well built and reliable, but is as close to the vintage thing as possible, I think going with the custom shop option is not something to overlook. Now, again, am I recommending everyone go out and spend $5,000 on a custom shop guitar? Absolutely not. This is completely a subjective thing. I would also put the boutique guitar in that category. It does something for me personally that I like better than a more standard off the wall Fender or Sir or something like that. So as always, huge thanks to Righteous Guitars, Ben and Jeff and all the guys here for being good sports and letting me bring my camera in and make these videos for you guys. If you're ever in the Atlanta area, be sure to drop by Righteous Guitars. This is a truly impressive shop with some unbelievable customer service. I really can't recommend this shop enough. Let me know what you think about these three guitars, which one sounded best to you and which would you buy if you had the cash. If you'd like to support the channel directly, check out the green room, which is linked down below. There you can check out the weekly lesson content I have going on over there, as well as download my original music and sign up for monthly Skype sessions with me if you're so inclined. For all you Helix and HX Stomp users, you can check out my custom presets available for download in the description box as well. And let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. Should we do a Gibson version, custom shop versus boutique versus Gibson USA? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, that's gonna do it for today. I'm Rhett Scholl, thanks for watching, and remember there is no plan B.